Hi everyone. Nice to see you all at this wonderful birthday celebration. I hope we haven't depressed you too much. But I think it's all about inspiring people to fill in the dark spots of Wikipedia. Um, today I just want to elaborate on one of the points that Mark and Bernie was talking about. And I want to try and convince you and others by the end of this 10 minutes that Wikipedia is no longer just a popular source, it's an authoritative source. It's become an authority in our information environment and why that matters. So I'm kind of zooming out a bit um, and talking about the reconfiguration of expertise more generally um, in today's information environment and where, what Wikipedia's role is in that. So I just finished my PhD in September here at the OAI. Mark was my supervisor. And so this is a 10-minute um, run-through of some of the things that I've been talking about in my PhD, which you are welcome to read. It's riveting stuff. Yes, yes. OK, so the reason why this is all quite radical is because in 2006, um, about five years after Wikipedia was started, in Wikipedia's um, heyday, I think, um, Time magazine kind of encapsulated uh, the, the, the ideas of the time when they, when they gave their Person of the Year award to you. And they said that 2006 is a story about community and collaboration on a scale never seen before. It's about the cosmic compendium of knowledge, Wikipedia, and the million channel people's network, YouTube, and the online metropolis, MySpace. Remember that? <laughs> it's about the many resting power from the few and helping one another for nothing, and how that will not only change the world, but also change how the world changes. Now, um, in many ways, Wikipedia, um, is used as the David to big media's Goliath. It represents the David, um, the up-and-coming um, youngster to big media's um, power. And what I want to try and argue today is that what we've actually seen is a reversal of this. Wikipedia is now a Goliath in its own right. Now, one of the, um, so we've already heard, Wikipedia is the seventh biggest website in the world now. Um, it is visited by millions of people around the world. It's not only popular, but it's authoritative. It plays a central role, as we heard earlier, not just um, in its own right, but also as the semantic web initiatives um, lead to an increase in connectivity between different information sources. Wikipedia is used to populate a lot of different sites. Now, probably the biggest um, indicator of its authority is the growing centrality of Wikipedia in um, terms of political communications. More and more we read about uh, politicians, governments trying to edit Wikipedia um, to represent their own interests. In 2002, no one cared less whether they had a Wikipedia article. Um, governments could not have cared less. Nowadays, it is becoming absolutely essential to have a Wikipedia page about you if you're a politician and to have um, as little controversy about you on that article as possible. Now, what has brought about this change? How have we um, gone so far in such a short amount of time? Now, there are a number of factors, but I'm going to talk about three major changes that have led to Wikipedia's central role in the information ecology. The first is um, new logics. The second is about new actors and alliances that have come on the scene. And the third is about new technologies. Now, um, when we talk about logics, one of the pr premium or primary logics that is now embedded within our information ecology is this idea of crowd wisdom. The wisdom of the crowds, the crowd is all wise. Jaron Lania has written wonderful um, articles about how this idea, this resurgence actually, um, of this idea that the collective is all wise. 
So this leads to increased credibility. When we look at a Wikipedia article and we imagine all the people that might have contributed to that, even if they haven't, um, there's this logic and idea of, of the crowd being all wise. This is also encapsulated by the open source um, principles of the fact that all bugs are shallow. Um, it's called Linus's law. And it says that more people that actually look at a website or well, particularly in the area of software development, the better quality that article will be, or that piece of um, work will be. The second uh, factor that has led to this increasing centrality is new actors and alliances. Um, Mark and I have written about this, but I think um, there was a very silent coup that happened in 2012 um, something very, very significant that people aren't really talking about right now. Um, but it was when Google announced that now it wouldn't only produce search results when people searched for people, things, places on Google, but it would also present a fact box on the right-hand side of the page and present not only options for a person's query, but the facts. So if you search for Jerusalem, for example, um, what is the capital of Jerusalem, you would not only get a list of possible answers to your query, but you would also get a fact box. And Wikipedia played a very central role in the information that was presented in that fact box. So that's a, a major um, driving force behind these new changes and the centrality. And finally, um, very importantly, new technologies. So uh, the fact that information is now digital has enabled major efficiencies um, and new technologies and the growth of the internet has meant that digital information is now central. So the fact that Wikipedia was a digital resource and Encyclopedia Britannica was not digital um, or was not semantically organized was very essential in Wikipedia's growth. Now. The problem with each of these changes is that they have unexpected consequences. And some of this has been spoken about um, by Bernie and Mark, and there's lots more research out there. So the first is about the logics of the collective being all wise. Now, there are many examples, particularly in software, where uh, collective and open systems definitely do lead to greater quality. But an encyclopedia is not um, software. And so what has often happened is that when facts, particularly um, contentious facts about people, um, enter this environment, there's this illusion that we will be getting quality information when we're looking at these pages. But actually what we find is in some cases there are people, PR agents, etc., who are being paid um, to edit these articles. There are certain articles that the market will not serve. Um, so the market of open volunteers in Africa will not serve. So that's the first unexpected consequence. Then around new actors and alliances. As Mark and I have shown in some of our research, one of the problems with these alliances is this growing um, centralization of information. And the fact with the Google Knowledge Graph now, it is becoming much more um, difficult for people to actually edit the information that Google is now presenting on its fact box. So the article we wrote about Jerusalem, for example, um, on Google, if you search for what is the capital of Israel, it will come up with Jerusalem as um, the capital in the Google Knowledge Graph. Now, um, Israel might think that um, that Oh, so did I say, yeah. Israel might think that, pa that um, Jerusalem is the capital of Israel, but almost every single, in fact, every other country in the world does not consider Jerusalem to be its capital. But there's very, it is very difficult for us to now um, change that information. So as information becomes decontextualized and extracted from one context to the other, even though it says it's from Wikipedia, it becomes very difficult for us to actually edit and participate in that knowledge. The third unexpected consequence is around new technologies. And this is really what we've heard um, covered before. And that's that the fact that technology um, and particularly the semantic web enables a greater efficiency of information sharing. 
The problem is that information that is not digital, information that is not published, and there is a lot out there, is simply not um, covered and is simply not available. And because we think that uh, this is the collective sum of all human knowledge, uh, it makes that problem even worse. So the only solution, and I've thought about this for a very long time, to this problem of centra growing centrality, Wikipedia, like any other information source, is biased. It is um, not a neutral platform. That is, that, that is not a problem per se. It's a problem when information becomes more centralized, when we have fewer and more dominant actors um, in this en environment. So more, now more than ever, what we need is people, more of us, to watch Wikipedia. Not just in terms of what its editors do, but in terms of, of the governance of Wikipedia, the fact that it's um, more and more based and um, centralized in Silicon Valley. And some people are starting to do this, but they mostly are on the edges. We have things like Wikipediocracy. Many people disagree and hate Wikipediocracy because they think they're very radical. Well, Wikipedia Wikipediocracy is there because it's filling a very significant need and we'll need more of these people to watch Wikipedia in the future. Thank you.